I mean, we, we might as well start the World to España two stages, and they've both been dangerous as hell. Like the riders protesting, second stage neutralized in the last nine kilometers. That time trial looked lethal. Like imagine going 60 kilometers an hour with seven other guys in the dark in a very tight cornered um, circuit. I mean, uh, we'll show a meme that we found on Twitter on this, but <laughs> what a joke. It is sort of a joke, isn't it? I mean, it, I, it's, it's kind of just like a, a regular kind of British crit kind of town centre crit when it gets to like the elite race at like 7.30. It's a little bit dusky, you know, people are, it's kind of like, who is this person coming across the line? Although you could literally not really make out anyone like when Sudal came across the line, I mean, I didn't watch it live, but I've seen pictures and highlights and like, holy moly, I would not have wanted to have been on like TT bars, like that far from a person's wheel in the dark without access to brakes, like it on a slippery surface. It couldn't actually have got worse, I don't think. It's actually a miracle that there was only one DNF in Lawrence de Plus, to be honest with you. I think that's actually quite surprising. And, you know, then again, on stage two, it was, you know, equally as bad to the point where they took the, they took the GC at the top of the first climb. Is that, it was like on the circuit, I think. Yeah, on the first climb of the circuit. And then Scott will love the winner as well because it was, it was Kron. So he'll, he'll be, he'll be loving that. But yeah, I, I don't really know. It seems like a bit of a hash by the UCI, like, cause it's a bit silly what's, going on and there's quite rightfully quite a lot of backlash from riders and teams and you know us as fans as well it's not really a good look for a professional you know race a grand tour to be you know in such a bit of a shambles already in the first couple of stages so hopefully the rain goes away now and people stop crashing and it all just sort of relaxes down in the rest of Volta otherwise we are in for a really long time yeah a pretty i mean a calamity really over those opening two stages particularly that opening one why did it have to start so late i guess if it wasn't raining it would have been lighter but still they could have factored that in it's august but you know you can still expect rain planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance you know and and then it's like those later teams that went off in the dark doing this in like that level of light is just dangerous it's bad Rimko even pull after the line was just annoyed he said afterwards that the riders aren't circus monkeys he has a point there Remco is often outspoken i think he gets a little bit too much slack for being outspoken but with this i uh, i 100 get where he's coming from i think that i respect Avenapool more after him speaking out than before. I know, like you said, you and you are, you know, people people do think Avonapool's a little bit too aggressive sometimes, maybe, and a little bit too boisterous in what he says, but I think he's he's completely fair in saying what he said. And I've I know that some people are saying, oh, he should, you know, he should just kind of, you know, keep to himself and just let the media kind of team deal with it. But I like to see a rider's personality. I think sometimes in cycling now we get quite boring interviews, dare I say. It's all quite run-of-the-mill, uh, kind of same answers that you see every single day. So I was quite happy to see a bit of emotion and a bit of personality come out. I think that it's more appealing for, for me. I think I, I like the expression. I mean, he wasn't the only one. Like Jonas Vingor said they didn't, they didn't even care about their safety. They weren't concerned, the organisers. They were just blind and then Garen Thomas saying we're just pawned so it wasn't like anyone was being yeah I think Remco just stole the headlines because it was straight after and yeah he was very animated as well well rightly so they were probably the team that had the worst conditions of all of them it is it is good that these studies writers keep on like saying these kind of things but at the same time there was also a similar problem in the renui tour the other, well today actually um on the final stage where uh, the riders all came together and said that the course was too dangerous and they they neutralized the race so that they could have a discussion midway through the race to decide um how to neutralize the, the final circuit of the race and you know it just feels like these like 
almost chaotic decisions keep on happening and like why isn't there more like proof checking or preparation for these eventualities you know if the course is borderline dangerous surely you'd know that before the day um surely you'd think the sunsets in barcelona about 8 8 30 p.m don't have a time trial at 8 30 p.m you know these kind of things keep happening and it just i think it really makes cycling look silly and amateurish yeah it is stupid i think you're right it's, it is just it just makes us look a bit foolish because like you say it's it's more of like a token thing like the, the, the renewi tour whatever it is that they sort of stopped to have this it didn't actually result in anything happening that benefited the rider safety it was just that they had a discussion and just kind of stopped the race and it was more for the show rather than for an actual result coming out of it it just seemed a little bit pointless dare i say and i think you're right you, you know you, the, the course is available beforehand like weeks in advance same with a welter it's like don't just come up and react when it happens like why not bring this to their attention beforehand i, I don't know at, at one hand i am completely on the side of the riders but you can't just start you can't just throw the blame all the time at the organizers when you know, it, it's up to the riders. You know, the, the riders care about their own safety, but they seem to only care about it when things absolutely go wrong. Like, and then they start throwing their hands in the air. Whereas, actually, it would have been better to have tried to do something about it beforehand. But I don't know whether what kind of platform they have to do that other than Adam Hansen, apparently. Yeah, I think you're right. Like the World Championships as well. It's kind of like yeah. afterwards. Like, yeah, it is been, true, though. There's been lots of races. I can think of the last few years, like what was, I can't remember which, exactly which race it was, but last year they were racing over like inner city, cobbles, tram tracks or something. I think it was the one which I, I remember Mohoric just going absolutely crazy. It was Tour of Croatia. Yeah. Pro race. Yeah. And like Tour of Polonia when Jakobsen crashed. And like you say, Scott for World Championships, you know, that on wet, when it was wet, chaos, like absolute chaos. It's too dangerous. And it seems to just be a bit of a theme where there's just like races are races more dangerous or are they just more competitive, which is making it more dangerous? I, I don't know. But there's certainly a bit more of a trend for things to be more dangerous. I don't know. Can someone check it? Like it should be approved by someone before they design the course. Like it seems so many times we've seen like bollards in stupid places where it could kill someone if someone something happens. Isn't but then, yeah. but then how how are they going to know it's the uh, if if they design the route, or talk like they maybe call up the local mayor or whatever and like they drop the route. It's only really the Tour de France or the GDOT really who are going to drive the course beforehand, like whilst they're formulating the route. I don't think races like the Renewi Tour or the World Championships. Okay, the World Championships, maybe. Uh, yeah, I mean, de almost definitely. But, like, for these smaller races, they don't really check. But Google Map exists. You can hire an intern. I, I don't think there's any excuse for this. <laughs> like, it's, I mean, well, to Spania, I, we've, yeah, I don't know. We don't really have too much of the race anyway, because neutralized, then neutralized again, kind of. Well, it wasn't neutralized. DSM took the victory and then had the most horrific day the next day. 